this morning as we quickly flip our Bibles to Haggai chapter number one and second Corinthians chapter number nine. The book of Haggai chapter number one and the epistle of Paul to the people of Corinth chapter number second Corinthians chapter number nine and I read. Haggai chapter 1, I read from verse 6 down to 13. You have so much I'm bringing me to. You eat but do not have enough. You drink but you are not filled with drink. You clothe yourselves but no, but no one is warm. And he who earns wages, earns wages to put into a bag which holds. Thus said the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Go up to the mountains and bring wood and build the temple that I may take pleasure in it and be glorified, says the Lord. You looked for much, but indeed it came to little. And when you brought it home, I blew it away. Who blew it away? Who blew it away? Is God wicked? But is the scripture not true? I blew it away. Why? Says the Lord of hosts. Because of my house that is in ruins, while every one of you runs to his own house, verse 10, therefore the heavens above you which hold the dew, and the house which holds his fruit. For I call for a drought on the land and the mountains, on the grain and the new wine and the oil, on whatever the ground brings forth, on men and livestock, and on all the labor of your hands. Then Zerubbabel the son of Shephtiel, and Joshua the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, with all the remnants of the people, obeyed the voice of the Lord their God, and the words of Agai the prophet, as the Lord their God has sent him. And the people feared the presence of the Lord. Then Agai, the Lord's messenger, spoke the Lord's message to the people, saying, I'm with you, says the Lord. Now quickly look at chapter 2. I want to read it from verse 7. The final event when you obeyed God. And I will shake all nations. That is after it return to God, obey the principle of God's word for the gate of prosperity. And they shall come to the desire of all nations. And I will fill this temple. With what? Glory. With what? Glory. Says the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine. And the gold is mine, said the Lord of hosts. The glory of this latter temple shall be greater than the former. Yeah. Says the Lord of hosts, and peace in this place I will give peace. Yeah. Says the Lord of hosts. Yeah. Now jump to verse 15. And now carefully consider from this day forward. From before stone was laid upon stone in the temple of the Lord. Since those days, when one came to a heap of twenty heapers, there were about ten. But one came to the wine vats to draw out fifty baths from the press. There were about twenty. I struck him with, with blight and milled you, and hail in the labor of your hands. Yet you did not turn to me, says the Lord. Consider now from this day forward, from the twenty-fourth day of the ninth month, from the day that the foundation of the Lord's temple was laid, consider it. Is the seed still in the barn, as yet the vine, the fig tree, the pomegranate, and the holy tree have not yet fruit. But from this day, I will bless you. Amen. I will bless you. Amen. Now, we are going to read Second Corinthians chapter 9, but from that, if God is going to bless, what are the principles expected? There are seven principles expected for us to inculcate and then place the man on God for things to begin to happen as they ought to happen in our finances. Many people are struggling today not because of the economic challenges of the nation, but people are struggling because they have abandoned God's goals. They have abandoned God's principle, and God is not a respecter of person. God has exalted his word far above every of his name. So that's why we labor 24-7, 30 days in a month, we gather but it's never enough. Even when the pay is raised, it's still the same struggle. The question is about to be addressed briefly. I pray I will have time to cover it well. Second Corinthians chapter number nine. 
I read from verse 6. From this I say, he who so sparing him will also read sparing. And he who so bountifully will also read bountifully. So let each one give as he proposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loves who? And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. That you always have enough sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work, as it is written. He has despised abroad. He has given to the poor his righteousness and pure forever. Now may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food, supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruit of your righteousness. Amen. While you are enriched in everything for all liberality, with consistency given through us to God. Verse 12. For the administration of this service not only supplies the need of the saints, but also is abundant through many thanksgivings to God. Why through the proof of this ministry, they glorify God for the obedience of your confession to the gospel of Christ, and for your liberal sharing with them and all men. And by the prayer for you, who long for you because of the exceeding grace of God in you, thanks be to God, for it is indescribable gift. Praise the Lord. Please make sure your phones are switched. This is the house of God. You don't go to the governor's office with your phones on. They will send you out. So let us give respect to God. There are many calls we have been receiving that have not changed our status. And it's time to receive the call of God. I mean the voice of God, which is God's own call, rather than the call of men. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Speaking this morning on the subject of the wonders of kingdom prosperity. Do you need a turn around in your life or in your finances or your economic situation? Do you want a comprehensive flow of the mystery of the fullness of prosperity? Life is to be enjoyed, not to be endured. The word of God tells us in second and third John chapter, chapter 1, verse 2. He says, Beloved, I wish you prosper and be in health as thy soul. That is your mind, your emotion, your seat of intelligence, your reasoning faculty, and your choice, that is your capacity and ability to choose as they prosper. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, He says, Remember the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, he became poor, that through his poverty we might become rich. In Psalm 34, verse 10, the word of the Lord tells us, He says that though the young lion do lack and suffer hunger, they that seek the Lord will never lack anything good. But why are the children of God lacking? In Psalm 37, verse 23, David the beloved, the man after God's heart, testified. He says in Psalm 37, verse 23, he says, I was young when I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor is he begging for bread. Why is it today Christian beg for bread? Why is it that believers, committed believers, they lack even more than the people in the mosque? Why is it that Christians, they struggle even more than the unbelievers? In Psalm 132, verse 15, the word of the Lord tells us, He said, The Lord God will bless us. He says, We are born now, we are with the abundance of things, and we bless our poor with bread. In Psalm 1, verse 3, He says, Whatever will live, our hands shall prosper. In Psalm 112, verse 2, the, verse 3, the Bible tells us, when you read from verse 1 down to 3 of Psalm 112, it says, concerning them that fear the Lord, and then concerning the upright and up that is the righteous, and we are the righteousness of God, because Christ has made us, as we came out from the cause of the Lord, and has made us to be righteous. It says, wealth and riches shall be in your house. But why is it that for many Christians, wealth and riches are far? Is it that God is putting them? Is it that wealth is sin? Is it that riches is it holiness? Is it to be poor is not to be holy? To be poor is not to be holy because poverty is sin. Praise the Lord. So how do I now plug into the wonders of the kingdom prosperity? In Gospel according to St. John chapter 3, verse 16, Jesus speaking, he says, For God so loved the world that he did what? How many of his sons? How many of his sons? Please to me, church. How many of his sons? Which means he gave 100%. All, everything he has is future because sonship connotes inheritance. Sonship connotes legacy. You know, there are some cultures and traditions in this country 
You may give birth to 50,000 girls, but if you don't have a son, you don't have a transference of legacy. Two of us. So, in the same light, God had, Jesus had only, God had only one son. And the sonship is so that you can imagine you have all the world at your hand and your culture and your custom. If you don't, if you don't have a son, there is no continuation of your legacy, and you have to pick it out. Jesus speaking further in Matthew 6 and 3 about the principles of the kingdom. The minister of the, minister of the kingdom teaches for what? He says, seek it first the kingdom. He says, seek it last. Many people want the principle of God last, they want self first. And the problem of man today, despite committed in church, is the problem of self. I, me, myself. I, me, my. So, and that's the problem why many Christians are poorer, struggling, making money but not having anything to show for it because of self-centeredness. Praise the Lord. So he says, seek it first the kingdom of God. He says, seek it later. Seek it not after it is convenient for you, whether being good or evil. Seek it not whether, when you are okay. He that is faithful in little is also faithful in much. Seest thou, Zechariah 14, a man that despises the days of small beginning. You can despise the self of God's beginning and expect God to prosper you when he knows you are not faithful in little. In your places of work, do they promote people who are lazy? People who don't do anything. People who may not come to work for three months, they have been they come to work, they will say by supernatural lifting, they have been promoted. Is that a duty organization? God will never promote mediocrity. At the same time, God will never promote whatever we work against his principle. So if you want, if you don't want to be gathering and for God to be blowing it away, you know this is not said I'm blowing it away. The one who is supposed to preserve for you is the one now who is blowing it away. Then you should now consider your ways and sit up so that you are peace to him by doing his work because God is not a partial God. Praise the Lord. So, number one principles out of the seven ways of plugging to it. And these principles are not optional. They are total packages. Total package. Not that I will, I'm trying in one, I'm not faithful in other. He that is he that is unfaithful in one is unfaithful in how many with God. Oh. Oh. Everything with God is a zero sum game. There is nothing like after all I'm trying, I'm better than Mr. B. As far as God is concerned. In fact, Mr. B who acknowledges his own is better than you. Who comes like a Pharisee after I fast twice a week? I pay my tithes, but you do others. Praise the Lord. Amen. Number one, everybody say kingdom promotion. Kingdom promotion. Say it again. Promotion. Say it aloud. Kingdom what is kingdom promotion? Ability to take advantage of kingdom demands. Ability to take advantage of what? Kingdom demands. This is the number one principle for complete turnaround and breakthrough. If riches and wealth is your ability to assess what is needed per time, Exodus chapter number 10, verse 19, the Bible tells us that money answers all things. In the latter part. In Exodus chapter 7, verse 12, the A part, the Bible tells us that money is a defense. So if he answers all things, everybody needs it. Or who is here that doesn't need it? Is anybody here who doesn't need money? And then if it's a defense, it's a social defense. If you are the firstborn in your family and you don't have, they won't consult you before they take decisions. If your last born is the richest, though he's 22 years old, they will consult him and they say, well, tell your brothers and tell your sisters that we have decided. But if you are the first born, or the head of the family takes the shield and it's not convenient for him or her, and he says, well, you people can carry on, I think I, I'm busy that day. They will, they, everybody will say, we need you. Draw force. So money is a social defense. Now, giving is living. Giving is what? It secures the future. Number two, if that is still on one, A, B, giving is living. A, B, it delivers from all embarrassments. It delivers from what? How many embarrassments? All embarrassment. See, I pray, may you respond to this principle with zeal and zest in the name of Jesus. Amen. Therefore, do costly investments in the wind, in the kingdom. Do costly investment where? Jesus advised us in Matthew chapter 6 when you begin to read from verse 19 that we should sow into the kingdom, 
We should not lay into the outlet treasures where moth will come and destroy it. Secure your future. Most times we invest only in corrupt things. We will remember the kingdom and until you seek first the kingdom of God, no matter how dynamic the prophecy is, nothing changes. But things will begin to change for you for the better. Amen. So, celebrate opportunities to promote his kingdom. Celebrate opportunities to do what? To promote his kingdom. Remember in Haggai chapter 1 of our text, he said twice, consider your ways. Which means the way you have been going, you have been allowing him to blow away your treasure. You know, most times you think that it's the devil. You say, oh, the devil has hit my finance again. The devil has hit my finance again. The devil has done this. But God says, I is the one. And what did he say there? Who is the one blowing it away? Why is he blowing it away? Because you left the house of God in rooms. Everybody wants to build his own house. Everybody wants to back his own land. Everybody wants to extend his own estate. But nobody is interested in the state of the condition of the house of God. So God says he's angry. So that is wickedness. Because the Bible tells us that God is angry with the wicked every day. So why will God, you are born again, you are a child of God, you are a child of life. Why will he be blowing away your harvest? Why will he be blowing away your income? Why will he be blowing away your promotion? Why will he be blowing away the reward of your labor? Why? Because you have neglected him. self centeredness So, what do I do? What are the opportunities I need to take? What are the opportunities? Number one. There is opportunities in kingdom promotion. In kingdom promotion is ability to take advantage of kingdom demands. Now, what are the opportunities? A, exercising your crazy love for God. Exercising your what? Crazy love for God. How? Built for Him. Tell your neighbor, built for God. Sometimes I listen to news lines. And at times when I'm privileged occasionally to read newspaper, I will hear that one night, one chief decided in his village to build a sanctuary for God in his village for 150 million. I heard about a man who was not even noticed in his village, who made money and decided to build every year a church. In, in this village and every neighboring village in this town. I mean, around this town. How will the man not live long? How will the man not prosper? But you discover that most Pentecostal charismatic are so greedy, self centered, taking delight in using God, but never taking delight in doing good for God. So, as a result, even when we make pledge, we make God last. Even when we make promise, in fact, if you want, as a pastor, if you want to keep yourself, have confidence in the pledge of a Pentecostal man. For a promise of any project, a part will be frustrated. Why? Because we have no fear of God passing. We are supposed to show the way, but we are destroying the way. Um, how many people in Orthodox have been pledged and written letters to their where is the money? It is only Pentecostal you have to call, you have to massage, you have to pay. In fact, some people on Boss of Christ have to call them this money and tell them the banner is coming up because the, the boss will so arrive. So that you won't say, Pastor, embarrass you. It's uncalled for. Why? Because we never need to see God first, we we'll see God last. And that when we keep struggling and whining the meal and nothing is working, it's like a child whose mother gave us a pack of sweets and gave the child. One of the sweets, and the mother asked the child, Can I have a bite? And he started crying, rolling on the floor, rolling on the floor, rolling on the floor. He said, Mommy, I will never give you. And he said, What is wrong? He said, Mommy took my pack. And just a little out of my sweet. Who has the abundance of all the sweets? And that's how we behave as one who is yet to be matured in his grace, who is yet to be matured in understanding of his wisdom. And without wisdom, understanding, and the knowledge about a thing, expectation will be cut short. Proverbs 24. If you read verse 13 and 14, you know the latter part we used to quote that yet surely the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut off. But it talks about the honeycomb, 
getting wisdom and then the knowledge from wisdom. Even where money is a defense in Exodus chapter 10 verse 19, it talks about the place of wisdom and knowledge. So if you never have the knowledge of what you are doing, and Luther continue. But I pray that God will have given me grace to preach to you the wonders of kingdom prosperity, your deliverance and liberty is delivered to your heart. So you will take your own financial destiny by either taking the message or turning away from it and turning it to destruction. Turn it off to destruction. But I pray this morning, everybody will turn in to financial breakthrough. Amen. Work and riches for fulfillment for a better change in the name of Jesus. Amen. I have exercised the place of prayer for financial breakthrough. It has never worked. I've never seen anyone who said he prayed himself or herself to financial breakthrough. When I walked in January 2000, on 40 days water only, the first 15 days was dedicated for financial breakthrough. Praise is still ours every day. The only voice is give. Give the television, give the freezer, give this, give that, give that, give that. I've never had anyone say, I pray myself and money came. Never. All we hear is give. And if I know it is giving, then why do not plug into it? If Ashiwaju, who is not of us, knows how to die, how much for the children of light? I will not really go state. Why the children of light are busy struggling, self-centered? The children of the evening are busy positioning and ruling over them. Solomon said in Genesis chapter 10, reading from verse 7, he says, I returned under the sun, I saw evil. I saw princes walking on bare foot and servants riding on horses. He says in an aberration. But who brought about the aberration? Because of lack of understanding of the children of light. Don't lose the place, Sakat. In fact, not all of them pay to most cities. Some of them give it to churches. One of the council of the House of Bread members of this community who bought trucks, that's what we call his neighbor, who bought trucks for schools, he sent this to the church to give. Some reject something. He pays tithe to respect the churches. Why will not go many times? People position for the children of life, they misposition. And that is why God has given me grace to download this to you today. You will position to be first among the world. So I was sharing with you about the reckless and the degrees of the man's generosity. The way he gives to the kingdom. It's not a believer, but he knows what is right. You know, the principles of the kingdom, when you do it, it has nothing to do whether we are going to heaven or not. It takes you grace to rule this heart. And when you don't do it, you get stranded. So it's not about praying and fasting. I pray the message sometimes. I take one of my old messages in the former church that I preach on intercess, financial intercessors. Pray the money and not concern for the money and intercessors will be poor. Not because intercessory ministry is the ministry of the poor, but it's a ministry of people thinking we will pray it, it happens. Why will I make things happen for others and I remain angry? That is conclusion. You know, people just say, only child, only child, only child, but they have never seen only child. They have never even seen Benny. Praise the Lord. Let's turn our Bibles. Project for me, First Kings chapter 8 and First Chronicles chapter 29. You can put it up and down. First Kings chapter 8 and First Chronicles 29. God is telling us this morning that wonders of kingdom prosperity we need to consider our ways. First Kings chapter number. Eight from verse number 17 to 18. 17 to 18. And it was in the heart of David, my father, to build a house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. And the Lord said unto David, my father, Whereas it was in thy heart to build a house unto my name, thou didst well that it was in thy heart. Next verse, please. Nevertheless, thou shalt not build the house, but thy son that shall come forth out of thy loins, he shall build the house 
unto my name. Now, let's be fair. If God tells you he will not build, that will be a special thanksgiving. So that's why when they say, forget about the pledge, they say, thank you, Pastor. When they say, don't worry about the boss of grace, they say, oh, <laughs> that's what I've been waiting for. Why must you wait when you counsel? Counseling it is not a profit, it's not profitable for you. It's a pay. It's a pay. When they say, forget about the pledge, just forget. <laughs> it's a bad because you still pay for it. Now, First Chronicles 29. In First Chronicles 29, and somebody there their life. First Chronicles 29. <coughs> Furthermore, David the king said unto all the congregation, Solomon, my son, whom my Lord God hath chosen, is yet young and tender. Please, go inside. First, beg your pardon, First Corinthians 29. I read from verse 3 down to 5. Moreover, because I have set my affection on the house of my God, I have given to the house of my God over and above all that have prepared for the holy house. How did he give? Hello, church. How did he give? How did he give? All he has prepared. All he has budgeted. Remember that too much financial analysis brings about financial paralysis spiritually. My own special treasure of gold and silver, 3,000 talents of gold, of the God of Ophi, and 7,000 talents of refined silver to overlay the walls of the houses, the gold for the things of gold, and the silver for the things of silver, and for all kinds of work to be done by the hands of grass men, who then is willing to consecrate himself this day to the Lord? Who then is ready to send himself out to the work of the Lord? Everything he has prepared. Many of us enter this church, meeting AC, meeting all things prepared, and we are the most stingy set of people God has ever approached to his assembly. He said, Who is ready this day to consecrate himself to the work of the Lord? Consider your wish. Have affection for the house of God. Be among them. What are the opportunities? Give to the poor. You know, the least offering out of all the offerings from this assembly and many churches is when you call offering for the poor. God said the poor shall not see from your knees. You know, there are some people, all their prayer is to be able to see somebody who will be giving them coins, the crumbs. But you cannot turn your face away from them. The Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter 28, verse 27, He that giveth unto the poor shall not lack. But he that hideth his face shall have many a cause. So we have to give for the poor. So the poor will still be in the assembly. No matter the prayer you pray. But my prayer is that many of you under the utterance of my voice, you will rise and come out of this. Amen. So give it to charity, orphanages, old people's home, medical outreaches, prison ministry. Ladies and gentlemen, let us help others to find future. Let us help others to find future. See, because of time, another opportunity. Give to us every course in your church as directed. For example, covenant of wealth. Psalm 50 verse 5. It's a gathering of all my saints who has covenanted with me with an offering. Boss of grace. Church programs. The kinsman support for building is rather a sickening thing. I'm very pathetic that elders at the gate are behaving like destroyer at the gate. If you have to beg men, they said they needed a list of items to be purchased. They needed a letter. They needed a ticket. Everything provided, they refused to rise. I salute kudos to the woman. As of today for the birth of grace, the woman has over 5.7 million. They would have bought their boss last month. If not, that's the same.